Hello my fellow lifeforms, and welcome to Phantom Universe. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Younger Dryas Cataclysmic Event. We're going to talk about what it is, when it happened, the evidence for it, and the implications it had for the planet. So what is the Younger Dryas Event? Well, on the National Center for Environmental Information, it gives us a decent summary right here. So it says here, the Younger Dryas is one of the most well-known examples of abrupt change. About 14,500 years ago, Earth's climate began to shift from a cold glacial world into a warmer interglacial state. Partway through this transition, temperatures in the northwest hemisphere suddenly returned to near glacial conditions. So we can see here on this graph when the Younger Dryas took place. We can see prior to 15,000 years ago was the peak of the last ice age that was kind of slowly coming out of it. And then we get this spike in temperature globally that then drops back down into this freezing event. And this is called the Younger Dryas. It's 1,100 years of bitter glacial freezing gripping the planet. And then around 12 and 11,000 years ago, the planet comes right back out of that freezing into the modern warmer climate that we're experiencing today called the Holocene. Before we had the technology and data of this temperature fluctuation and how abrupt it was, it was originally thought that as the Earth came out of the Ice Age, it was a slow, gradual transition as the ice slowly melted and filled up the oceans eventually. But this information that we now have shows that it was a much, much faster and more catastrophic event. The current accepted explanation on what caused the Younger Dryas is that as the glacial ice was rapidly melting from the temperature increase beforehand, the fresh glacial water was rushing into the oceans and disrupting the currents of the time. This impulse of fresh water into the thermohaline circulation disrupted that belt of energy that brought the warmer waters and temperatures up into the northern hemisphere. This destabilized the temperatures globally, causing it to then plummet down into freezing. Though this is the accepted model on what caused the Younger Dryas event, new evidence has been coming out to give us a better understanding on what caused this whole transition to take place. There is new evidence to suggest that around 12,800 and 13,000 years ago, the Earth was hit by multiple objects from a disintegrating tail of a comet. The energy and heat from these objects entering into the atmosphere and some of them even hitting the Laurentide ice sheet caused a massive amount of meltwater that would then enter into the oceans causing the whole fluctuation of temperature. The discovery that sparked this impact hypothesis was the finding of microspheres, nanodiamonds, and other cosmic key fingerprints in the Younger Dryas boundary layer. The Younger Dryas boundary layer, also known as the Black Mat, is a distinct line in the dirt separating the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs. Below this line we find the remains of the megafauna and the evidence of the Clovis people who were the Paleolithic natives of the Americas during the Ice Age. However, above the Younger Dryas boundary, the megafauna and the Clovis people suddenly disappear from the archaeological record. The reason for their disappearance has been a very controversial and heated debate up until this day because up until now there's been no real direct evidence one way or the other to give a reason on what caused this extinction. However, the evidence of a cosmic impact in the Younger Dryas boundary layer paints a better picture on the event that took place that could have caused this sudden disappearance. So far, the evidence for a cosmic impact have been from the microspheres found in the Younger Dryas boundary layer. These objects can be formed in terrestrial ways. For an example, a volcano can create microspheres. However, to find such an abundance of them displaced over a large portion of the planet suggests a much larger impact like a cosmic impact. When an object from space hits the surface of the planet, the high pressure and heat vaporizes the rock underneath it. This mist is ejected into the atmosphere where it rapidly cools down into the spheres which slowly settles back to the ground to create a layer like we find in the Younger Dryas boundary. It's also worth pointing out that it was the finding of microspheres and other cosmic traces in the KPG boundary, formerly known as the KT boundary, which was the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. This finding suggested a cosmic impact, and this too was fought over vigorously in the academic world until the finding of the crater in the Yucatan Peninsula finally settled that debate. So far, the main argument against the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis has been the lack of a crater being found. However, an argument against that is if an extraterrestrial object hit a two mile thick glacier, there really wouldn't be a crater left to be discovered. The lack of a crater has been a roadblock for the impact hypothesis. That was until 2017 when NASA discovered the Hiawatha crater located underneath the Greenland ice cap. With how preserved this crater is, it suggests it being a much younger age, possibly even 13,000 years ago. But until more studies are done at the site, we won't get a definitive date on the age of the formation. So that's a basic summary of the Younger Dryas event and the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. I'm going to stop this video right here. I appreciate you for watching it and if you liked it hit the like button down below and if you're new to my channel hit subscribe for more content. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys later. Bye!